punish you. You're not supposed to think. You're supposed to repeat what you hear. And almost all books are written on that principle. Books are written, this is the truth. I have found out the truth. I will not explain it in chapter one. I'll explain a little more in chapter two. In chapter three, I'll summarize chapter one and chapter two to make sure you get it. Then in chapter four, I'll tell you a little more. Then in chapter five, I'll repeat it a different way. Then in chapter six, I'll tell it to you again. Now you better believe it. I've proven it. Now go and tell all your friends to buy this book so they'll learn the truth too. And people who have been through our educational system, they think, uh, they think they're thinking when they're, just, when they're just repeating like parrots. So I set out to sabotage the whole system by writing books that nobody can believe. <laughs> you believe one part, you take any book of mine and you believe the first 30 pages, you can't believe the next 30 pages. <laughs> If you somehow make a synthesis between them on some upper Hegelian level, this is the thesis, this is the antithesis, and somehow I'll make a synthesis up here, you find the next 30 pages throw you into an entirely different reality tunnel. By the time you get to the end, you don't know what, when I'm kidding and when I'm telling the truth. And for us, you either have to start thinking, which is how people end up in seminars like this, or they throw the book across the room and they say, what's this son of a bitch up to? I think he should be banned. <laughs> and uh, that is my whole approach. And it horrifies me that somebody, uh, that somebody might believe something I've written. Because I know how fallible I am. I've had to live with myself for 58 years, and I know what a schmuck I can be. And the thought that somebody's going to set me up as an idol and say it must be true because Robin Anton Wilson wrote it, that is such a terrifying thought <laughs> that I perforce had to invent this style of paradox and play to prevent people from thinking they're getting the truth out of my books. What you're getting out of my books is my guesses, my hunches, sometimes my prejudices. Uh, but I don't know. Unlike the Pope, the Ayatollah, uh, Roger Nish, Carl Sagan, and all the other prophets of all the various. Uh, I don't claim to know the truth. All I claim to know is little hunks of what I've experienced and guesses I've made. Like I, I guess there's a world external to my brain. I can't prove it. But it seems more reasonable because I have pretty good luck most of the time when I'm writing and I want a cup of coffee. I have pretty good, look at, uh, pretty good luck at getting up from the word processor, out the door, down the hall, into the kitchen, to the coffee machine, and bringing back coffee. And I don't think that would work as often as it does if there were no real world out there. Uh, I know there are philosophers who can prove there is no real world out there, but I find it more convenient to assume that there is. I also assume I don't know anything about it, uh, except how to find the coffee. Uh, beyond that, it gets more and more perplexing and confusing.